Okay, welcome everybody. We're going to wait just one more minute. Uh, it's not quite the top of the hour and then we'll get started, but we'll give people a chance to, um, to go ahead and filter in. Okay, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, so I'd like to welcome everybody to our first SakaiCon. Um, we, we used the name SakaiCon a few years back, but we're gonna reserve it going forward for our summer conference, which um, hopefully we'll have a, an in-person component, um, much like we do um, this year with the folks in Ann Arbor. So um, first, let me just Thank our sponsors. Um, we have uh, Learning Experiences, EDF, Longsight, and Warpwire sponsoring our event this year. So thank you to all of them for helping to make this possible and for giving us uh, some cool prizes to give away later. So you'll see some more about that um, later in the day. Um, and we also want a quick hello from the folks in Ann Arbor. So I see Chuck has just joined us. And um, Chuck, if you want to take it over, I'll go ahead and stop my share. Okay, uh, so hi from Ann Arbor. Um, everybody, uh, we have a watch party. Everybody's just in the back and they're just talking. And so everyone hasn't seen each other in so long. And so we're, we're face to face here and uh, we got dinner tonight. And so everyone will catch up. But uh, so I'll sign off here, let you finish your welcome and then I'll get you up on the screen. So that's that's what I'm doing next, okay? All right, okay. great. See you Thanks. from Ann Arbor, yep. Yep. Very cool. I see some applause from yeah. the, the online folks. So that, that's very nice. All right, so let me um, get my screen share back. All right, so um, today's agenda, um, this, this little welcome segment is um, only gonna last at max 10 minutes because at uh, 10 after, we're gonna have a session on Sakai Conversations. This is our brand new conversations tool. And uh, Heather Valley from Duke is gonna be doing that. Um, then at uh, 10.50, we'll have a session from Dave Evelyn on assignments. Um, at 11.30, we've got a really exciting uh, Teaching with the Stars showcase that we're calling it that because um, we have several teaching stars that are gonna demo some very cool things that they're doing in their courses. And, um, and we've got some super fan panelists that are gonna react to those uh, presentations. Chris and Trisakai. So um, Chuck, if you wanna mute yourself. Oh. I'm gonna mute you, okay. Um, so uh, at 12.40 after our showcase, I'm gonna be doing a session on rubrics and you'll get a chance to try that out a little bit if you've not experimented with the rubrics tool. And then at 1.20, we have Sakai Team Trivia, which is it's gonna be our first round of trivia. We're gonna have a second round on the second day and we'll be doing prizes for both, both days. Um, and then we'll have a little 10 minute wrap up to kind of bookmark the day. And that is our agenda for today. Um, so let me give you a quick tour of the Tri Sakai site, just so if, if you haven't already looked around, let me, um, here, hang on one second, I gotta, 
hide some sites because I got too much stuff in my favorites list. All right. So um, when you get into the um, the conference area, go back to conference home. Um, you'll see uh, day one. These are, these are all the links and session information for today. Day two, obviously, for tomorrow. There is an attendee FAQ if you haven't already looked at it. Um, if you're a first time attendee in particular, you probably want to read through here. It's just got some tips about um, you know what to do if you need to to check your your computer for Zoom or you know where to look for slides, that sort of thing. Um, there's also a social wall. Um, which you should check out. Anything that is tweeted to with the hashtag SakaiCon22, um, if you do that on Twitter or Instagram, it'll show up in our feed. You can also um, use this little web form here that says join the conversation to just submit directly to the, um, the, the event wall um, without actually going through Twitter or um, or Instagram. So if you're not a fan of, of social media or you just don't want a bunch of Sakai stuff in your feed, you can submit with the web form this way. But we've got some cool pictures here from um, from the uh, the group in Ann Arbor. I think there's a picture of Paella at some point. Um, so, uh, so check out the social wall throughout the event. And then again, as I mentioned, um, for today, you can expand each of these sections to get to the um, relevant links to join the session. Um, and our next one up is Sakai Conversations. There is a, a conversations link here, the tool itself, and I'm sure Heather will give you more information on that. Um, so that's another way that you can interact with other attendees. So let me go back to my slides. So um, just some tips, be sure to check out that attendee FAQ if you've not attended one of our online events before. Um, and, uh, and also, I hope to see lots of photos and things on the social wall from people. So um, take advantage of those hashtags. And if, in addition to this site, you'll also have a sandbox site that should have showed up in Sakai when you logged in. Um, that's a, a practice empty court. Well, it's not completely empty. We put a little sample content in there for you. But you have instructor permission in that site. Um, it's basically a practice area where you can um, you know, explore some of the tools that you'll be hearing about over the next couple of days and, um, you know, play around with different ways of, of creating content and presenting content. So feel free to um, do whatever you like in that sandbox site. Um, that one is for you to play with. Also, um, all of the sessions uh, for SakaiCon will be recorded and we're gonna put them up on YouTube after the event. So you'll get a notice when those are available, but we are recording everything. So you'll be able to check it out later if you miss a session or if you just wanna watch something again. Um, we do have some random prize drawings for the evaluation survey. So we're doing a, 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 an event evaluation at the end of each day, and we're gonna randomly select some winners uh, for prizes for those. So be sure to fill out your evaluation if you'd like to be entered in the drawing. Um, and then we do have trivia prizes, as I mentioned before, we're going to reward everyone in the winning team gets a prize uh, for both rounds, rounds one and two. And um, on the second day, we're also going to have uh, individual prizes for the top three scoring players across both days. So if you play both days, you have a better chance of, of racking up your score. Um, so. Those are all of the tips and everything I have for you this morning. Um, so I just want to thank everyone again for attending. We're very excited to have you here and it's going to be a great program. We've got a lot of cool stuff planned over the next couple of days. So uh, enjoy it and we will see you in the next session. And actually it's going to be in the same room. So if you want to hang out in here, you can. You don't have to close out of this um, particular webinar. You're just not going to be broadcasting for like a minute or so, and then Heather will take over. So thanks everybody. Uh, thank you, Wilma. Um, I'm going to take this opportunity to make sure my screen sharing is working properly and get the next session um, set up. So let's go ahead and get that going.
And I'll say a quick hi, I'm Josh Wilson. Uh, I'm gonna serve as the moderator for this session. So it is 10.09 uh, a.m. Eastern. We will get started in just one minute at 10.10 10 a.m. Eastern. We're gonna try our very best to stay on time with our, with our schedule today. So sit back, relax, and we'll have Sakai conversations in just a minute. Um, are the slides showing properly for everyone? Okay, great. Thank you so much. Um, as often happens with chat, I mean, with uh, Zoom, chat's kind of hard for the presenter to keep an eye on. So I'm hoping Josh will flag me down if um, anything important uh, shows up there. I'll be glad to do that. Do you want to uh, do you want to hear those kinds of things from time to time or save them till the end? Um, if anything seems timely, go ahead and flag it. Um, but I'm also going to have time for questions at the end. Okay, can do. Well, it looks like 1010. So um, if it's okay with everyone, I'm going to go ahead and get started. So good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to the first full session at SakaiCon. I'm Heather Valley, a learning experience designer at Duke Learning Innovation. Uh, originally, one of my uh, co-workers, Gray Rebus, was going to be a co-presenter, but unfortunately, they're a bit under the weather today, so um, they're not going to be able to uh, attend. Anyway, I'll be providing an overview of a new tool that is being developed for Sakai Conversations and give you a chance to try it out and provide some feedback on it. What is the Conversations tool? Uh, Sakai Conversations is a new, modern, online, asynchronous discussion tool. It's similar to discussions or forums, but it's been designed to offer a more robust, learner-centered experience than the current Sakai discussion tool. It offers two discussion formats. One is a threaded discussion, which is based on what you might think of as the traditional discussion tools offered within a learning management system. And two, it also offers a Q&A format. I'll walk you through those discussion types in the Sakai Khan site. We're excited to show you this tool because it's still um, undergoing some development, and we hope you might provide some feedback as you explore the tool in today's sessions and throughout the rest of Sakai Khan. This tool has been deployed in Duke's instance of Sakai. Some faculty members have used it in their classes, and Sakai is looking to, to expand its deployment. You might be wondering why the team would want to develop a new discussion tool in Sakai when Sakai already has one. Well, there's two main reasons for that. The first is that we heard from faculty members that they'd like a few more features out of the current tool. That combined with the fact that our other course discussion vendor, we used a third party one, raised their prices to unsustainable levels, left our learning technology environment without the options we wanted for class discussions. After considering a range of options, Duke Learning Innovation partnered with Longsight and the folks from Duke's creative and user experience team. I'm not going to read out all these names, but the team consisted of 12 people with a range of skills and experience in design, learning technology, pedagogy, research, and evaluation. Having this team provided a range of voices and opportunities to gain insight from even more stakeholders. In fact, before any design took place, the team started doing research. We wanted to answer questions such as, what do instructors, students, learning designers, and support staff want from a course discussion tool? What works and doesn't work in existing tools? What does research show makes an effective class discussion? And how can a new tool reflect that research? We started with a comprehensive literature review that explored what was already known about these tools. And then we did focus groups with faculty, undergraduate and graduate students, as well as sessions with Sakai community members to find answers to gaps in the literature and to conduct user stories or to collect user stories. We did usability testing as we developed features. And we believe these steps allowed us to build a more robust learner centered tool. So how does it work? Let's take a look. So um, are we looking at conversations in the Sky site now? We are indeed. Excellent. Okay. 
before we get started with anything else, I want to point people towards one very important uh, way to curate your experience with conversations throughout the course of um, this convention. If you go to the upper right corner of your Sakai site, it may be covered by um, speaker images or whatnot, but uh, the little circle with initials in it and click on that, go to preferences. The first tab is notifications and you can scroll down to conversations. The default is to send notifications. Now notifications is something that our instructors, our students all wanted. It sends an email to you every time someone posts in conversations. You may not want that throughout the entire convention. If that's the case, just click to change it to do not send me conversations notifications. And the only way you will see what's happening in, is to go directly to conversations, which I, like, I think is a good way to do that as well. If you want to get an email every time someone posts, leave that like that. If you decide to use this tool in your course sites and you have multiple sites that you're a part of on your own Sakai um, installation, you can do this granularly um, by, in this case, we have events and courses, and you can select a specific site. But since for this situation, you're only going to be um, seeing these from the convention, just send me or do not send me, we'll get it done for you. Anyway, with that bit of housekeeping out of, out of the way, let's go back to SakaiCon and conversations. And I'm going to give you first a quick lay of the land. What we have here is a two panel setup. On the left are um, all of the topics and questions that have already been added. Up at the top, there are ways to filter by tags. We'll get into that more or other ways of filtering, whether it's questions, questions with answers, discussion topics, things that are bookmarked, moderated, unviewed. And again, I'll go into more detail about what each of those are. As an instructor, which I expect many of you are, you have access to settings. Settings gives you the opportunity to um, more specifically curate the experience that your students are going to have. Uh, you can allow reactions, which I will go into further later. Upvoting, which is a way where students would say, this is a, a good thing. Um, and you can sort of track how many people approved of a given post. Some instructors have concerns that that becomes a bit of a popularity contest. So you have a choice as to whether to enable that. You can allow anonymous to other student posting. Um, a, an instructor can see who posts anything anywhere within conversations. However, especially if you have a lot of very, um, let's say, I'm not going to get too much into adjectives, but students who have certain opinions about how they want to be perceived, uh, they may not want to look stupid, as it were, in front of other students, and they'd like the opportunity to ask questions anonymously. This can make the um, Q&A function especially more useful to everyone. You can allow bookmarking, again, something I'm going to go into further, and pinning. If you want to stop people from posting at all in conversations, say before a midterm or something like that. You can prevent any more authoring and you can enable community guidelines. Now those are currently off because everyone at this convention we're assuming is a professional who knows how to interact online. However, if you want to make sure that students um, participate in conversations or at least know how they're supposed to participate a specific way, you can go in here and tell them exactly how they're supposed to act, whether it's as vague as be excellent to one another or um, much more detailed. Perhaps you can put something from your student handbook in here. Whatever information you want them to have coming in regarding how their interactions are going to go, then whenever a student comes to conversations in your course site for the first time, they will have to click a button saying they agree to abide by those guidelines before they can participate further. 
So those are just general. Uh, we have very granular ways of um, determining what people with different roles can do within the site. The instructors, as this is currently set up, can do everything. That includes things like uh, create comments, delete comments, etc. Students have somewhat fewer privileges. Um, students are not allowed to delete other students' comments. That's probably the way you're going to want to leave it. Um, but you can go in here and determine exactly what you want people to be able to do and make that happen. Tags, which again, we're going to go into further. It can be set up here, edited, deleted. Um, this is something you can use to make things easier to find. And um, if you're using conversations heavily within a course, you may find this is particularly useful. And we have statistics where you can go in and see how people have been participating in the course site, or rather the conversations part of the course site. So that's all the back end things that students will never see. Um, so Heather, there's a question regarding students, things that students might never see from the team at Marist. And the question is, do student users have access to general settings? No, they do not. Uh, settings are entirely for instructors and admins, and probably if there's a course builder role. Um, but no, students will not be able to adjust settings. The student view, this will not even be here. Students will just come in, they'll see tags, filters, and create new topic and anything in this main um, section. So uh, with that, let's go ahead and go to create a new topic. Before you create a topic, it's a good idea to decide how you want the conversation around that topic to go. Are you just going to post a question that you want someone to answer? In which case, Q&A is going to be the way, or the question uh, type of topic is going to probably be the way you want to go. Are you going to have a wide ranging multi-threaded discussion where students can respond to your prompt, to each other, um, to have sort of an asynchronous version of what a an in-class discussion might be? In that case, you're going to want the discussion type. Uh, these are broadly the same as far as this posting window goes, but the way people respond to them is somewhat different. So it's good to keep that in mind. Uh, you can see here that most of these are discussion topic types on the left. Uh, that's because most of those were preset for the various sessions, and we want people to have as wide-ranging a conversation about a given session as they want to have. So let's go ahead and um, let's say I am an instructor, or rather, yeah, let's say I'm an instructor in a chemistry class. And I do not want to answer the same question at three from 30 different students at three in the morning. I will tell them, if you have a question about a given topic, please go into conversations, click question and ask it there. Now, if this is done well and, and properly and instructors are firm about guiding people to using this tool, a student at 3 a.m. can post um, post a question about chapter two in their chemistry book. And then um, Well, if I'm an instructor, I'm probably going to want to add proper tags for this. But anyway, um, they're posted, they'll post it, say, everyone in the site or just instructors in the site. If they don't care where the answer comes from, Bob in the seat next to me can tell me, I don't care. I just need to know the answer. Everyone in the site is fine. If they're kind of like, mm, I feel stupid asking this, I'm just going to get an answer from the instructor, that's fine, but it might take a little longer because it's 3 a.m. and instructors sleep. Um, availability for a question like this now is probably fine, but you instructors especially do have the option to specify dates. Only instructors 
um, get to set due dates, I believe. Um, if I, again, I'm a student who's a little concerned about image, I might make this anonymous, but really I'm just going to post that. And then I and everyone else who has a question about Redox can see the answer to that. Um, I'm not going to post that quite yet because people haven't had a chance to turn off notifications. But let's go ahead and look at something that's already been posted. Uh, you can see here an answer to a post by an instructor has the instructor flag. That means if um, a student posts a question and they look at the answer, they see that instructor flag, they can have some sense of this answer is probably canonical. This person knows what they're talking about. I can take this answer, incorporate it into my understanding of the topic and go on with the course. If they go in and see that is just somebody's read this and given me an answer, they can take that answer for whatever value they care to give it. And presumably other students may be smart and have a solid understanding, so it could be useful. So that is how we sort of saw the um, question um, topic type as being useful. It's based on a Q&A tool, third party one that um, we use, that was the one that got super pricey and we had to get rid of. And our instructors really seem to find it pretty useful. So if you choose to use conversations, you might want to um, consider that for you know, curating your students' uh, questions in an offline manner. So let's look more at um, other aspects of adding topics from an instructor perspective. Again, there's topic type. Uh, title is what you're going to see here on the left, introductions, let's, let's discuss, et cetera. Those are all titles. Uh, details are where you can give people either more details about the question you're asking or more context about what the discussion is supposed to be about. Tags are ways that you can organize a, a set of conversation threads. For example, you can preset tags for week one, week two, week three, et cetera. And then as uh, students are looking for conversations that have already happened, they can narrow things down by the tag. So if a student is like, okay, we were talking about Walt Whitman in week three, I really need to remember what the, what the instructor was saying in that discussion thread about Walt. So let's go down to the week three discussion thread, um, discussion threads. And you can click tags to just narrow it down to those. Uh, if a student is wondering, okay, I posted a bunch of questions, but oh, hey, I turned off all my notifications. Did anyone ever answer those? You can go to answered questions. And um, if we had any, those would show up there, but no one's answered anything yet. Um, you can also look for all the things that have been bookmarked. If you're an instructor who's wondering, where's that thread where I had to uh, stop a few conversations in the tracks. I'll get into how to do that in a few minutes. Um, you can go down to all the moderated things. If you're an instructor who wants to just, or a student who just wants to see the things that you haven't had a chance to look at yet, you can filter it by unviewed. So you have a, once things start filling up here, and you can see this is just for one day's uh, or two days conference worth of things. Things can get pretty full. Um, you can really narrow things down when you're looking for stuff. So that is what the tags are for. Um, if you realize that you don't have a tag uh, that you're looking for, but you've already got a bunch of stuff in here, you can save this as a draft and then go into settings to Add another topic, three, add new tag. Then you can go back to your draft and see the little kebab here. This gives you the opportunity to edit, 
to change your mind entirely and delete things. Um, and for um, managing student stuff, especially hiding and locking posts. So you go into edit, you add your information here or your discussion prompt. You give it a tag, click add, and all the tags, you can add multiple tags if you want, week three, poets, um, people who uh, were from America in the 1900s, etc. You can add as many as you like here. And then you can post to whoever you want to see that. Uh, you can have discussions with your instructors in conversations that students never see. If you're an instructor, just click on instructors in the site. If you're working out uh, TA issues or whatnot, that's a good way to do it. You can make it available now, display the topic immediately, or you can specify dates. If you are one of those instructors who knows what you're talking about every week, what you want the students to discuss, um, and you just have that running on rails, you can load all of these for a semester before the semester starts and boom, um, it's there. It'll just post at the time you decide and uh, you don't have to think about it again, other than seeing what your students are doing in it. Um, so you can say, when do you want to show? If it's a situation where students have to respond within a, at a due date, or if you want to lock things before exams and whatnot, you can set that. You can decide when you want to hide everything. Again, could be useful if you don't want students to be looking at this during exams. Uh, you have a lot of options here on how you want students to interact with any given post. And if you want to make this something that students um, have to do within a time frame, give them a due date, accept late responses until. Um, again, you can really determine when students are going to do what they do. Um, this is not currently set up to interact with the gradebook. That is something we are uh, planning on adding within the next few months. It, like I said at the start, this is still a bit under development. Um, so that is something that we're looking forward to adding. So, so Heather, there are two questions in Q&A at this point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, one is, uh, can I keep students from deleting posts? Uh, yes, you can. That is under settings with permissions. Um, deleting own topics, if you unclick this, a student cannot delete it. Students currently can't delete anyone else's topic, so you don't have to worry about that. But you can set this up uh, before a given thing and um, then just save it and you're good to go there. All right. And here's a second question. This one is a bit more of a head scratcher. Um, what is the best way to think about conversations that need to be fluid rather than bound by a date? Uh, could instructors create tags that correspond with specific units or timeframes? Absolutely. Instructors can set tags that um, are basically anything you want. Uh, if you if the topic is everything we talk about in the first three weeks, you can make it week one through three. If the topic is uh, something that may not be within a given time frame, but you want to keep coming back to, say it's a um, American civics question, you can say, and perhaps you're going to you know, talk about that at various points throughout the semester, you can make that a tag. Um, so basically you can um, tag anything the way you want it and then students will be able to, um, or you <laughs> will be able to uh, narrow down discussions about any of those um, issues. Now, you'll see the tags I just added aren't here. That's because nothing's been posted with those tags. Does that answer the question? Seems so, thanks. Okay, great. Well, let's go back in here. I, th I think I've got to post options, right? Pinning is something that only instructors can do. 
pinning puts things up in the upper left. They're always there, even um, if you're filtering by tags. Um, that's a good idea for stuff you always want to have front and center for students. If you want to write a post about exam dates or upcoming um, assignments or whatnot, you can pin them and they'll be very easy for students to find. You can also go back and with the kebab hit edit as I just did and unpin and that will make it drop down to um, all topics here. Um, anonymous, that's um, as I went into uh, for students, it's not anonymous to you. Um, you can post anonymous and I believe it'll just show as an instructor post. And that's great for um, courses that have three or four instructors and you just want to post to be the voice of the instructor. Um, and students must post before reading responses. Uh, that's something that we blatantly stole from the earlier forums, which instructors like when they want someone to post something moderately original and just instead of just saying, oh yeah, uh, Sue wrote something great, I agree with it. So um, I'm going to cancel this because I don't think it adds to anything to the site. You can see this is only going to be visible to me. I have a draft uh, post here. So um, I can go back to the kebab and edit as I did before. If there is a student posting something that you don't want anyone else to see for various reasons, um, I'm sure you all can think of them, you can click hide and only instructors will be able to see that. Um, if someone's posting something where you don't necessarily want to hide it, but you want to stop the conversation because things are maybe going off the rails a little bit, you can lock it. So again, these edit and delete are things that by default students can do to their own posts. Instructors can edit, delete, hide, and lock everything. So instructors have a lot of control. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this. Um, it isn't going to let you do it by accident. Are you sure you want to delete this topic? OK, yes, I do. And you can see that the drafts topics thing on the left has disappeared, um, and as has that entire post. So let's see. I think that's pretty much um, the introduction I wanted to give. So I'm going to stop sharing. Or rather, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing now. Um, so let's talk next steps. Uh, I would really appreciate it, as would everyone on my team, um, if people would try the tool out in the course of SakaiCon today. Um, go ahead and post something totally new or um, respond to a discussion thread. There's a discussion thread for every session. Um, if you have a question, go ahead that is not necessarily related to a discussion, a, a particular um, session, go ahead and just post that as a question and answer other people's questions. We're a smart community. I think people probably have a lot of good answers. Um, ask questions for the speakers join in ongoing discussion threads. Uh, just go ahead and basically hammer at that tool as much as you would like, see what it can do, see if it might be useful in the context of your courses. And um, feel free to ask me any questions um, using the uh, conversations tool through the rest of the convention. I'm going to be keeping an eye on things. I am not turning off notifications, our IP my inbox, I hope. And um, I look forward to seeing what people bring up. So okay. Heather, there are um, there are a couple of questions in Q&A and we are one minute from the end of the session. Right. Um, is there a specific, is there a conversations topic in uh, in the conference discussion area that where you'd like people to post questions for you? Yes, there is. All of the session related uh, topics start with let's discuss. Um, it's the most recent at the top 
And I unfortunately wasn't thinking when I set it up. So uh, conversations is way at the bottom because I put that one in first and went chronologically. My bad. But anyway, yes, it is there. I would love to see conversations there and I'm happy to answer any other questions I can in the last minute. Let's see, here's potentially a quick one. Uh, how are the all topics sorted or organized? Is that organization configurable beyond the tag and filter controls? Um, you can organize um, responses in the right-hand uh, panel um, by date, by um, the person posting, um, et cetera. But on the left-hand panel, it is the most recent at the top under all topics. It's not currently configurable. That is on our list of uh, things that we're going to be thinking of for upcoming versions. All right. And with that, it is it is 1040 a.m. Eastern. So this is the end of the session. Thank you all for attending. Thank you for your questions. So we are now entering a very short break. So uh, the next session will be starting at 10.50 a.m. Eastern, 10 minutes from now. That will focus on Sakai assignments and grader. And that'll be led by uh, Sakai expert Dave Eveland. So that is not to be missed. Definitely come and check it out and uh, get yourself a cup of coffee or a small snack. And we will see you at 10.50. Thanks so much. Bye, all. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.